Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu Nasa'inuhu Nasa'inuhu Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina Wa min sayyiati a'amalina Man yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu Wa man yudlilhu fala hadiya lah Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allahu Wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu Wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in قال الله تعالى في التنزيل العزيز بعد نقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد In the last year and a bit, I've seen some of my close friends, uh, people that I care about. One of them, his kidney failed. Another had developed an autoimmune disease, uh, unexpl- just completely out of nowhere, no previous symptoms. Another praying salah in a masjid and just dropped dead. Just heart attack, that was the explanation that we got, it just passed away. And these are all people who are either my age, a little bit older than me, maybe at most someone who's like in their mid 40s. And the diagnosis of these folks is one thing or the other, and I'm not qualified to discuss that. But I was startled by what the doctors told their families and then what their families told me afterwards is that the underlying cause it seems for their ailments or their ultimate end here is just a high amount of stress just a high amount of stress i'm not going to talk about stress from a medical perspective there's people in the audience who can who have way more qualification to do that and i don't need to convince you of how this is what's termed as the silent killer, stress. But I can tell you, I've seen it in my personal life. People that I care for, people that I loved, and I do love still, getting extremely sick or passing away. And one of the possible causes and the thing that unites all of their cases is an an in, in amount of stress in their life that's too much. And if you zoom out and you look at their lives, you're like, this is, person has a good life, he has a house, he has a car, he's got kids. What's there to be stressed about? What's there to be stressed about? But the details are where the stress is. The worries that we have is where the stress lies in. And sometimes our minds will go in a direction uncontrollable direction of worry and it becomes the norm we accept that as the norm and happens often to middle-aged men more than any other demographic middle-aged men particularly because our worries perhaps are a lot but I want to talk about this from Islamic perspective a spiritual perspective our deen has the answers for our salvation in the next life and our goodness in this life. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana. Best in this life, the best in the next life, wa qina adhab nar, and the ultimate success to be delivered from the fire of hell. I want to speak about this as from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. The Messenger of Allah ﷺ uses the expression of hum. Hum is uh, grief, hum is something that's described as uh, hamma yahimmu, 
uh, is described as something that uh, overpowers a person. It, you know, is something that worries them. That's similar to what would cause a person to be stressed out. They're worried about something that they cannot control. And I want to address this from a spiritual perspective. This is not a doctor's advice. You, if you are experiencing symptoms, if you have uh, problems that are uh, medical in nature, you should go and seek help medically. And that's physical, mental, uh, physical help and mental health, both aspects. But there's a spiritual aspect that we also believe affects our overall life. And I want to speak about that a little bit. And I'll focus what we can do on an expression that our Messenger of Allah some had taught us. A, a jumla, one expression that he taught us that is very powerful. And I, before this khutbah, I tried to, to implement this in my life for a couple of weeks before I did this khutbah today. And I can tell you, you don't have to you know, believe it from me, but I know it works. I can sense it. I have felt it. Inshallah, I encourage you to do the same thing as well. Uh, فيما رواه أبو داود وآخرون أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من قال حين يصبح وحين يمسي حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم سبع مرات كفاه الله تعالى ما أهمه من أمر الدنيا والآخرة وصحح إسناده شعيب الأرنوت رحمه الله this is a hadith that's mentioned in Abu Dawood, the connection of Abu Dawood and other books of hadith. Uh, it is a hadith that's been authenticated uh, by Sheikh Shu'aib al arnaud and others have commented on the authenticity of it. That's not the important part. The important part is that this is a legitimate hadith. And the statement goes as follows. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi says that the person who says seven times in the morning and seven times in the evening the following statement Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of what worries them in this life and the next what is the statement hasbi allahu la ilaha illahu alayhi tawakkaltu wa huwa rabbul arsh alazim allah is enough for me hasbi allah la ilaha illahu he is the only one Truly worthy of worship. No one else is worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alayhi tawakkaltu. Exclusively, I trust Him. And He is the Lord. Wahuwa Rabbul Arsh al The Lord of the Great Throne. The Lord of the Great Throne. This expression might seem familiar to you. You might have heard it. You might already know it. You might already say it. Alhamdulillah, if you do. But the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi is telling us, say this expression seven times in the morning. The morning time here is before the sun rises. And seven times in the evening, that's before the sun sets. And if you do that as a habit, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will take care of your worries. He will take care of what worries you in this life and what worries you in the next life. What's worrying you about your future and what's worrying you about your present. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will take care of it. When the Messenger of Allah mentions these expressions, when he teaches us this adhkar, these adhkar, these uh, words of remembrance, these words of remembrance are to be said uh, mindfully. This is a prerequisite. You have to be mindful when you say it. It cannot be just background noise. If you just said it without thinking about it, you should say them again while thinking about it. Because in Allah لا يستجيب دعوة قلب لا غافل. Allah does not respond to the dua of a person who is not present when they're making dua. They're distracted, or they're uh, busy with other things. They're making dua, but they're not focusing, or they don't understand even what they're saying. That dua, while there is barakah and there's ajr, it's not the essence of dua. The essence of dua is you're present, physically. And mentally when you make dua. So these adhkar and every dhikr that you learn from the Prophet ﷺ that's found in books like Hisnul Muslim and others, when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, say this at this time, the intent here is you say it with your mind present and your heart present. That's how the adhkar 
uh, bring meaning. There's narrations from Aisha radiallahu anha and from the Salaf that when they would read the adhkar of salah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, they would try to remember Allah's favors when they would say alhamdulillah. They would try to remember the glory of Allah when they would say subhanallah. This is how they would make adhkar. This is very high level of spirituality to make dhikr at that level. But this is from the sunnah of the Prophet that's what the Sunnah teaches us. Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah would often, uh, after Fajr, leave uh, his vicinity, go to like a mosque that's not uh, well populated, and he would spend from after Fajr Salah all the way till sun rise, uh, the sun rises, reciting Surah Fatiha again and again. Someone asked him, why do you recite the same Surah? You're Shaykh al-Islam. You have so much knowledge. He's like, this Surah contains all the types of dhikr that I think is, uh, that, that, that should be made. This is of course after making the adhkar of uh, sabah, he focuses his personal dhikr on reading Surah Fatiha. And shahid from the story is, when he's reading Surah Fatiha, he's trying to connect Surah Fatiha to what he's seeing in the people, what the people are asking him of the questions, what he's reading in the books, what he's writing, what he's producing as content. You see, the point is the dhikr, as simple as Surah Fatiha that all of us know, that all of us read. When he was reading it, he would read it mindfully, try to connect it to his circumstances. When he was in prison, rahimahullah, he said, now there is part of the Qur'an that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened upon me, that I wish I had, it had been opened upon me when I was not in prison. Meaning, he has time to focus and ponder and think, and then the same words that are said, Without thinking, when they're said with thought and mindfulness, they have a more profound meaning. That's the idea here. So when we make dhikr, when we make dhikr, we make dhikr mindfully. So when we say, Hasbi Allahu la ilaha illa, Allah is enough for us. We try to conceptualize that. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of us. Allah will take care of me, Allah will take care of you. Allah will take care of us all. He is, as the Messenger of Allah says, uh, uh, he says, if you were to only trust Allah fully, as He is supposed to be trusted, if you were to, you know, stop worrying about things you don't control, and leave them in the hands of Allah, you would become like the birds. You will leave in the morning empty stomach and return with full bellies. The idea of tawakkul here is not that we sit on our hands and say, inshallah, everything will be fine. That's not anybody has, no one in the history of Islam has ever said that. Everyone who talks about tawakkul, Al-Qurtabi for example says, Al-Tawakkul yaqumu ala um, ruknain. There's two parts of tawakkul. Part number one, اعتماد القلب على Allah. It's the heart is reliant on Allah. And the second part is, Al-Amalu bil asbab or Al-Akhdu bil asbab doing what's necessary. But you see, both of those have to be in place. In other, in other words, true trusting of Allah is, we do what we can. We worry about what we can control. And then we leave the things that we do not control to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what tawakkul is. Oh Allah, I have made you my representative for those things that I don't have any control over. Because you have control over them. La ilaha illahu. You're the only one worthy of worship. Wa huwa rabbul arshid azim. He is the Lord of the great throne. The great throne of Allah, the arsh of Allah. Ar Rahman wa ala al arsh istawa. He is established upon his throne. And the throne, as we find in, the, in hadith, is the greatest of Allah's creation. It's above all creation. He is the Lord of this great throne, the greatest of all creation. He can most definitely take care of the rest of us. He's most definitely able to and capable of taking care of the rest of us. We have to trust Him. This is the part. Leaving the things 
that we don't control in the hands of Allah. Focusing on what we control, that is the essence of tawakkul. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said that if you were able to say this expression seven times in the morning, seven times in the evening, Allah will take care of what is bothering you. Your worries in this life, your worries in the next life, He will take care of it. These, this expression said seven times is a reminder. You wake up in the morning, it reminds you of your priorities. Allah is in control. Let me focus on what I have to do. Let me focus on what I can influence. In the evening, as we're winding up our day, reminder again, mindfully we, see that, we say these words. And again, we go to bed or we go home. It, this peace of mind, Allah is in control. Let me focus on what I can do. Let me worry about what I have in front of me. Allah is in control of the rest. It's a beautiful, liberating mindset. And this is one example of what we could do uh, spiritually to manage the difficult stress that we deal with. Even if we have luxurious, privileged lives, people, as I mentioned in my introduction, who lived or live luxurious, privileged lives close to me, all are suffering because of this underlying stress. And but this dhikr, this beautiful way of looking at the world, is a spiritual remedy to that. أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَاسْتَغْفِرُوا اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن ولا أما بعد. I just request the brothers to, if you can move up and create space for those, for those of us who are coming in. تفسحوا في المجالس يفسح الله لكم. May Allah Subhanahu wa make space for you all. Uh, if you make space for your brothers, inshallah. Uh, this expression, the dua I shared with you, حسب الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم. Beautiful dua. It's also an ayah of the Quran. It's also an ayah of the Quran. It is the last ayah of Surah at tawbah فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ The last ayah of Surah number 9. And it's a very powerful ayah when you consider the context of Surah Tawbah. Surah Tawbah is a surah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is outlining the most difficult threats the Messenger of Allah وسلم, faced when it comes to uh, the uh, when it came to his enemies. It spoke about the hypocrites that from within tried to uproot uh, and completely destroy Islam. To the point where they went and collided uh, uh, and, and colluded, excuse me, with the Byzantine Empire to create a spy agency close to Medina. Did you know that? They actually went, colluded with the Byzantines. Created a masjid that was supposed to be a spy agency, spying on the Muslims, providing intelligence to the Byzantines. And they wanted the Messenger of Allah to come and bless that masjid by praying there. And then the Allah revealed the ayah exposing it. That was the level of threats he was facing. And those threats in Surah Tawbah, this is one example of it, many more of those are mentioned in Surah Tawbah. You can imagine the stress level of a person who has to deal with this. The conclusion of the surah. Allah tells the Messenger of Allah, Hasbi Allah, Allah will take care of you. Allah will take care of you. La ilaha illahu. Because He is the one who is the only one worthy of worship. You trust Him. Alayhi tawakkaltu. Because He is the Lord of the great throne. It's a very powerful ending to a very difficult surah. A surah that speaks about challenges me and you can't even comprehend. That the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was living. And this is the conclusion of it. Perhaps the wisdom here is that, O Messenger of Allah, here is the remedy for you to be able to manage your stress levels. This is the spiritual remedy. And the beauty of this is, is that this dhikr is very, very, very short and sweet. It doesn't take a lot to learn. It doesn't take a lot. All of us are qualified and educated this is a small thing. We should invest our time in learning the athkar from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. 
Invest your few minutes a day in it. There's tons of apps, tons of resources. There's no, literally no excuse left. It's very easy. It just requires prioritizing it. And I encourage you to prioritize it. Not just for your own sake, but the sake of your families, for the sake of your loved ones. We need to take care of our spirituality. We need to take care of our health. All of this we do in a multifaceted way, but we cannot ignore in this the spiritual aspect that the athkar provide. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a tawfiq to understand the Quran and Sunnah and to implement it in our life. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhu alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala muhammadin fil awalina wa fil akhirin. Wa salli ala muhammadin fil malai al-a'la ila yawm al-din. Allahumma ahina ala sunnatihi wa mitna ala millatihi. وحشرنا في زمرته واسقنا من حوضه يا رب العالمين لما آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها لما في المسلمين والمسلمات المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات لما حم موتانا وعافي مبتلانا وشف مرضانا وفق قيد أسرانا وتقبل شهداءنا يا رب العالمين وقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله